Boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad walk on. Man, hey, we got a special guest here today, y'all, man. We up here in L.A., man. You know, and I had to go get this guy right here, man. I, I seen him on another interview, and when I seen it, I was like, man, this, hey, I can't, I got to interview this guy, man. Grimace is in the building, man. Hey, 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 what's happening with y'all, man? What's going on? How y'all doing today? Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I love that hat, bro. I got to start off by saying that, man. You know, <laughs> hey, them signature moves is real serious. You feel <laughs> Man, I love military get down, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's that soldier shit. Yeah, know? man. So, man, um, we got, we always like to get into the backstory, man. But do you, you know what you ain't been doing, man? Tell them about uh, how we pay the bills. You know, we gonna have to tell you, we got to give them that. Because so y'all got to make sure you follow us on all streaming platforms. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. But we started doing Patreon. So that's the only place you're going to eventually find all our full-length interviews is on our Patreon page. You won't see it on YouTube anymore. So for a small donation, for a small subscription, you can see all our full-length interviews on our Patreon channel. Boss Talk Podcast 101 on Patreon. Man. Thank you in advance. Man, thank you. Thank you, Miss Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> so, man, Grimace, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, my brother. Oh, no, I appreciate you for having me, brother. Man. You know. When I think talk about your background, man, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not from up here, but you hear all the all these stories, man. But we want to go. You from where? Well, you from tree? You from tree? I'm top. from treetop. Treetop, Pyro. In the city of Compton, the wonderful, In the city lovely of city. Bumpton is what y'all. The wonderful, lovely city of Bumpton. <laughs> treetop. So, um, you born and raised. Born and raised. Yeah. So when I hear about treetop or Pyro, I'm hearing about gang. But when you're born, you're not born and you just automatically in a gang. So, in some instances, yeah. Really. In some instances, your community can 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 engulf you. Mm -hmm. uh, some areas, it's full gang activity, and it's more intense and. Uh, of course, you're not two years old running around being a baby gang member. I know, but it's expected of you, but it's not mandatory. Yeah. Is and, it? No, it's not mandatory, okay. but it's, it's, it's kind of a heavy, a heavy persuasion. Persuasion, <laughs> right. You know, sometimes it's so intense in some communities that um, if you're not doing something like going to college or if you don't have any goals or you don't have any, any, any role models in your family with a structure that's going to prevent you from being a part of a gang, mm -hmm. then you more likely will end up in a gang. But if you have some structure. Sometimes you have structure and you still end up out there in them streets. Sometimes. Sometimes. True enough. But in, when we're talking about the city of Los Angeles, right. the city of, of Compton, you know, um, these are some hard cities that have been through a lot. They're not just hard be just because. Mm -hmm. They're hard because they've been through a lot of economical uh, design disasters, mm -hmm. you know, designed and by, by a government or by a, a state, you know, to kind of create crime right. so that they can get funding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and different things of that nature. Whether exactly. you understand or believe it, you know, when you see politicians and, and, and government officials building private prisons, mm -hmm. who do you think they're building them for? Mm -hmm. That's real. That's has, a real conversation. Has there ever been a time that you have noticed or witnessed where, because um, I've heard about this in the past, but I don't know if they're still doing it now, where there was a certain kid that was growing up and showed promise. Um, doesn't have to have a structured background and so forth, but had so much promise, whether it be going to NFL or studies are so great, a straight A student where they wanted to join a gang, but the OGs was like, no, you need to go ahead and stick to this, this, and this, and you're not gonna do this. Yeah, I actually got a buddy that uh, was detoured, you know, we. 
we grew up in this, in, in 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 the neighborhood of Treetop Paru, and he went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he uh, started in the Nickersons. He moved from the Nickersons. Him and his family. Uh, his name is Solomon Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he went with the Giants. Mm -hmm. uh, two Super Bowl rings. Wow. Um, and yeah, we we grew up in the streets. You know, mm -hmm. me, two of his brothers. And him, and what we used to do is we used to play street ball. See, you never know which way an interview is going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know which way an interview is going to go because I don't that's have prepared questions. Right. That's but how we are. That's Solomon we are. was so cold, man. When we used to play street ball, it's it's in the street, you know, and and we we we, we playing football in the street, and I used to I used to just be so amazed. I'm so captivated by. Good athletes. How talent, you know, right. I'm not a sports person, but I like good to see good athletes do their thing. If it, whether it be basketball, I've seen some great basketball players that could have been in the pros when I was in the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. But Solomon, there wasn't a ball that can get by him. You know, he, had, man, it, it, when you pass the side, the, the curve, that's out of bounds. And Solomon, a one hand that sucker. And yeah. I'm talking about at 13, 14 years old. You know, so, yeah. No. And he wanted to join the gangs and they told him no. I won't say he wanted to join the gangs. Sometimes the gangs want you to join. Okay. You know, but it wasn't, it, it's not, you. some people you can't press. You know, you, you have a, a, a structured family and he, had a, he has a structured okay. family. So his brother is heavy in the streets and I was heavy in the streets and his other brother was quietly heavy in the street. So no, <laughs> you're not finna press this young man. Not that they did or did not. I don't know what went on in his personal life, but he made it up out of there and went to play and got signed, you know, signed up with a pro pro professional football team. I believe it was the Giants. I could call him right now and find out. But, uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, he did good. You know, he's living his life, you know, and, and we still live in ours. Wow. You know? I want to ask you about, and I'm going to jump back over into something, uh, treetop. Yeah. You hear stories about jumping in. Explain to me, is that a real thing or is that something that's just on the movies? Which one is it? It's, it's, not, a, it's not something that's just on the movies. Yeah, they do do that. They do do that. Uh, I didn't have to get jumped in because we're the people that started it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's, so you what? started the tradition of jumping in then. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't start the tradition of jumping in. That came along through other hands and other minds. Uh, but if when you we are started, the... we started as friends. Okay. We pretty much know what your hands is like already. We watched okay. you, uh -huh. you know. So, you know, we don't have to figure out if yeah. you're tough or not. I believe that's for strangers. I would hope that's for strangers because if you know somebody got hands and you talking about jumping them in, I know some people that you can put five of them on them and all five of them will touch the ground at one point throughout this event, mm -hmm. you know? So wow. that's not a good idea all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've heard of some situations. I was just talking to my partner, Taboo, and he was telling me some about a similar situation. I don't want to go into detail because I don't want to uh, embarrass funny. no people, but he told me a situation similar to that, and they didn't know this guy had hands, and that and that guy, he he left some people. He had, he said, man, I had to help, Grimace. <laughs> well, when I when I talk about the, the I, I've talked to a Tola Marv with he was I think he was tree top, wasn't he? Is it I told him more? I don't know he's talking about him. Oh, no, 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 no. No, he's, no, no. I, know I told him more of his, yeah, uh, I know he Piru, but he I don't know what. He, yeah. from, he from Compton? Yeah. Bompton. But, uh, well, y'all say Bompton. But it, it's so many different ones of y'all who been in this game forever. And, and, and some of y'all still living. Like a lot of them not here no more. I heard stories, we had Al Sean that said Evil Al was his dad mm -hmm. he was a, a, a part of the 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 bloods or, or pyro or well you, you have you have different communities okay you have different territories you know when you talk about bloods bloods are in la okay predominantly when you talk about pyros that's generally compton mm -hmm. yeah possibly watts Possibly Watts. Possibly Watts. Well, where, Watts where's is Nickerson at? Where is the that? Nickersons is a world of its own, and it's in <laughs> it's in Los Angeles, but it ain't nothing to laugh about. The okay. Nickersons, you know, I, I, I 
come in and out of the Nickersons a lot because that's where OJ and Solomon that went to the Super Bowl okay. and Cricket, that's where they came from, the Nickerson Gardens. You yeah, know? yeah. And so as kids, we always went back over there because just like anything else, we all homed like pigeons. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. we grow up somewhere, we 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 end up going back. No matter how far you take me away from Compton, I always find myself back in the city of Compton. You know, wow. I didn't been all up in the valley living uh, and, and enjoying life, but I miss the city. You know, I miss the, I miss the streets. You know, so yeah. I gotta come back sometimes and I visit. And you know, it's it's just a uh, it's not a bad city. You know, it's been a bad city. You know, what about years ago, Centennial High School. I went to Centennial. What What do you think when I say Centennial? What was What What, what comes to mind? Centennial was a good school. You know, I had a fight with the principal. You fought the principal? <laughs> yeah. Fight physical with, fight? Yeah, physical fight. Ooh, what you and the principal doing fighting? You don't, uh, you supposed to be, don't you supposed to be under disciplinary actions? Mm -hmm. Like, you was going to alternative school or something. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> I did end up getting kicked out, but yeah, the principal, I think his name was Mr. McCrumbie. Come closer to the mic. I think his name was Mr. McCrumbie. Okay, um, and you got kicked out after that? Yeah, I got kicked out. <laughs> but, Who won the fight? Uh... <laughs> Mr. McCrumby uh, was a big, tall dude, but that don't mean he won. <laughs> he was a big, tall, heavy set dude, and he had more anger than he had more physical abilities. I was a young man, so yeah, you know, I kind of grabbed him, slammed him against the uh, the uh, the counter, the, his his uh, desk, and uh, you know, he took his, he pushed me up out the office, and you know, I didn't want to go to jail. I know what's next, the school police. So I just called pops. And my pops came up there, and my pops had a conversation with him. And my pops used to be in these streets. But what the caused day. the fight in the first place? It was a, I used to sell weed at the school. Okay, right? so you were in the wrong. So, so I was in the wrong. But okay. I didn't have no weed this day. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. they came to my class to, 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 to get me the school police, the, the, the counts, my counselor, and they told everybody back away from him. And they took my bags and they searched. And I'm, I'm happy because I'm like, you can search me all day. I don't have no weed on me or in my locker, nothing. Okay. This is a bad day for you, but it's a good day for me. You know, and so uh, they, they took me to the locker and they really, Felt like he's got it in the locker. And when they got to the locker, and it was like two it. joints in there, right? But those were my personal joints. You know, and I'm like, man, I ain't got no weed. <laughs> so what caused the fight? Oh, I got sent to the office. And, you know, I got a little mouth on me. So I talked a little smack. You know, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you know that it didn't yeah. happen. No, no. You embarrass me like this. You come upon my person, you know. And I'm talking smack, you know. And, and he just know, like, I know you sell weed motherfucker you know and uh it's just like no man i don't care what you know and and uh we got into a little heated argument and he grabbed me and i grabbed him back and i i got a habit i i like to fight big niggas you know i like to fight people bigger than me you know i've been fighting people bigger than me since i was a kid my brother my pops you know so i come up in a household you fought your father my stepdad oh, that's okay. the only dad i know and i want to say that in the beginning, we had a lot of battles, but in the end, we became the best of friends. So yeah, but he taught me how to fight. He was six two, six three. Him and all his brothers was six two, six three, six four. They come up out of the swamps in the city of Compton, the Tatum family, mm. you know. But um, and people know him because they was in these streets before I was in these streets. Let me ask you a question. I'm gonna jump subjects on you a little bit, man. It's a lot of times you hear when you come up here. Y'all got a check-in procedure. I want to talk about checking in. What does checking in, uh, where does that derive from? Is it a real thing? Will people's lives get saved going through the check-in process, or will it be something to put them in jeopardy? You know, I don't really know about the check-in procedure. I've heard about it. And I believe that, yeah, it might be a good thing depending upon the integrity of the person or the entity that you're checking in with. Okay. You know, uh, if you're checking in with random people that you know don't know, then that's different. You, you, it's like a crapshoot. You play, you, you're gambling with your life. But if you're checking in with a, a re reliable source uh, that's well known and has a history of providing protection, 
which are guidance, you know. Um, you know, I don't mean to bring up things, but I think PMB would still be here, po possibly had he checked in. And some people get it twisted. And, and I think that's based on their own insecurities or their own ego. But if you come into a strange a, a strange city, and it's and believe me, you is popping out here in, in, in South Central Los Angeles, in, in the city of Compton, in the city of Watson, the city of Linwood, uh, uh, it's popping out. It's, it's shit going on. You know, it's not publicized all over the news. They do as much as they want to, but it's a lot that goes on, especially since the pandemic. It's become like a piracy. You know, um, it's good to check in. You know for people that come from out of state, especially if you're wearing a bunch of jewelry and gold. If you're wearing a bunch of jewelry, if that's your thing and you need to wear a bunch of jewelry uh, and you have some events that you're gonna be going to, you would want somebody locally unless you brought an army with you. you okay. Know, like Biz Marquis. <laughs> R.I.P. to Biz. Man. Yeah, that was Big my Biz partner, Marquis. man. You know, I drove Biz Marquis. Uh, I used to do limousine driving. Really? Yeah. How was that? How was business? It was walking? amazing, man. Um, good spirited guy seemed to good be. Good spirited, man. He even gave me some tips on how to how to um, how to use, you know, if you're not rich. And even I would say he's comfortable, but some of the prices on the products in the rooms in the hotels, the, the nice hotels are just extortion. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh he told me, man, I do this everywhere I go. I eat what I want in the room and I go to 7-Eleven and replace it and put it back before I check out. And I said, wow. But when I said an army. That's smart. Yeah. I didn't even think he about He said it. everything that, that that's in that room generally comes from the 7-Eleven. From the, from the, from the people. What's she thinking, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? You hear what he just said? Possibly. Well, <laughs> I've did. seen him do it, so <laughs> you I believe know it, it worked, worked. Right? yeah. <laughs> But I picked them up every day. And what I noticed, and V can contest to this, because I pick him and V up every day in a, a, a Tahoe. Okay. A, a private, you know, black, blacked out windows, Tahoe. And I remember there was some uh, Haitians, always a car full of Haitians. I don't know if they stayed at the same hotel I remember when I arrived there, um, either they was Haitians or Jamaicans, whatever, they looked to be very dangerous. So They're they, probably Jamaicans. Oh, maybe whatever. They brought, they brought their army with them. And yeah. everywhere we went, they was there. But they never made contact with Biz. They never made contact with, with, with V. You know, they was just there. You know, and the event that something would happen, I'm pretty sure that they would have been real active. Real you know? active. So, but if you're not coming like that to answer your question, I think you should check in with a reputable source. Uh, or if you have uh, family or friends out here that maybe can navigate you through the drama, you know, check in with them, you know. But if you don't have no family or friends and you're going into the hot seat, you're going, to, and, and Hollywood can become the hot seat, you know. Yeah, Dude, let me ask you this, man, because I'm a big DJ Quick fan. Yeah, um, real. I've been trying to reach out to him too. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get that boy on Boss Talk 101. Every time I come to LA, I'm like, man, I, need, I ain't hit him up in about a year. I think it became when when me and Sir Charles Jones, a blues Southern soul singer that I rock with. We was talking about him. And oh, we I just heard talked. about that. I that's was wondering, is that the same person? Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, he's talking nasty. Yeah, he's an ass. Yeah, my 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 my, my ex girl love that. <laughs> all her friends. Yeah, yeah. He, all, he, he got something going. They didn't join the, the church now. Yeah. Though, so, <laughs> said y'all got to stop listening to Sir Charles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Sir Charles Jones. Me, we talked about uh, DJ Quick man. Just how do you? What do you? Yeah, he went. Did he go to Centennial too? I don't know, but I know he know he from he, yeah, he from he your grew side up in of the town. neighborhood. I mean, I know Quickie. I grew up. He grew up right there in the community. Very on talented. Street. Very yeah. talented. Multi, multi talents. Um, how I, did you? How did y'all link? And, and how did you even know him? Well, he grew up in the neighborhood. Same same neighborhood. Yeah, I, I, you know, five streets, four streets over, five streets over. I think that's the. Uh, I can't remember. It's the four hundred block of Spruce, and. Um, you know, I remember he had a, he's got a little cousin named Tiny Sean, Tiny Sean. 
I think that's her name. And um, I used to ride her around on the handlebars when we was kids. And wow. She was. Uh, she's a cool kid, and 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 he was. A, he's a cool guy, you know. And his sister. Uh, he had two sisters. I was real cool. One of his sisters. I used to like one of his sisters, and uh, you know he did what he did. He 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 seen a bigger picture. Uh, he actually linked up with. He did his thing, you know, creatively by his own by his own skill, you know, in his garage with his music, and uh, as he advanced, I think he linked up with Player Ham and uh, Tweed Cadillac, and they became the penthouse players. Wow. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. That's that why was I said, the wow. first group that Eazy e signed. First group. The first group that Eazy e signed was the penthouse players. Eazy e he, he, so he signed, because I, I thought he was a crip or something. I yeah, but he business hung with is his, business. Business is business. He, yeah. oh, he wasn't even, when you, when you he was focused on his money. The money, man. It's the money. It's about the money, you know. For a lot of people, for me, I gotta be comfortable. It's about integrity for me. That's good. That's good you know, stuff. Right I don't there, take you know, Remus, That's good. If stuff. it's something I want, I can just take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so DJ Quick was he a person that was approachable and talk? You could talk to him. Yeah, Quick was approachable as a kid, but then you know when you get older and you get professional, you have to make yourself less approachable because you don't know who approaching you. They you got know all kind of con artists and slick slicksters out there. You know, you might be saving their life. That's something that you said that really makes sense, man, because I talk to a lot of people who people seem to say they're not approachable, but you never know what a person approaching you for. Absolutely. Not only that, but phone calls. You got to be careful when people call you. I have learned you know, that lately. If you don't know who they don't are, answer. don't talk. Just hang up. Text me, Senator. That's Let what I'm seeing. Do Text I do that? I'm not, I had to start doing that because too many people calling me now. Yeah, and then you don't know, you don't know, know if they, on the other end, they're recording, recording me. You, yeah. And then they can use this, even though you're not even thinking about anything negative, they might ask you something that might not even appear to be negative, but in the end, when they can start it, they can turn it into something negative. So you have to be careful with that. Wow. Uh, you being out here, this, 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 I always keep thinking about it, it's just, this is the mecca when it come down to gang violence. Yeah, uh, this is where I it seen, all starts. I seen where you were surrounded by 100 Crips? Yeah. How, break that down to me. How do you, how do <laughs> Grimace get surrounded? And how you get in that neighborhood? What the heck was you doing there? Well, we really didn't explore a lot. And JB was more of the explorer. I think JB went to school in Carson, California. I grew up and was raised and went to school in Compton. And he had heard about a party. I don't know who he heard about it from. And it was at a park in uh, Carson, Del Amo Park. And when we got there, you know, Crips and Bloods can and have had, you know, gotten along inside of parties. Sometimes there's some, there's some outbreak, but it can be personal. It could be two people just doing a, giving, you know, having a, it's a one-on-one -on -one fade. You know, it don't always have to be a whole gang fight. You know, it's not always that. So I don't know if he knew. It was too late to even care if he knew because we're in the middle of it. And uh, we arrived at the party. We seen the party. And from the top, you can't really tell what's what. And as we go down, we realize, wait a minute, this is all Crips. We, we're on the wrong side. We, we, we assume. And then you don't want to just turn around and walk right back out because it's, it's, it's in an open area. And let me explain that better. It's in an open area. And, and uh, it's a park. You know. And then over on the other side, you can hear music going on. So I'm saying, well, maybe that's where the homies are. You know, so... We travel on over there, and it's not. It's the same thing. <laughs> wow. But here we are. We got identifying uh, bandanas and rags that, that, that show we definitely pyrus, and we're out of our jurisdiction Damn it, boy. by a long time. But are we a crash crew? It's three of us. Yeah. <laughs> Did we panic? No. Did what? we run? No. Y'all had to stay. Did we look scared? No, you got to sit still. You can't just... 
What happens when you panic and you start running? Oh, they gonna run out. They chasing you. So we just walked on back through like it wasn't nothing. Like this wasn't an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and they and it wasn't no static. Yeah, it was some static, but it wasn't no static. You know, uh, JB did know somebody there, and he just happened to be a reputable person. So at the end of the day, it all broke wide. You know, no 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 harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Yeah, they let they gave that pass, that ultimate pass. But that person that he knew again, the question you asked earlier, uh, the check in. Yeah, that was. Back in, I'm talking about back in the 80s. That, yeah. that, that wasn't a check-in. That was a reputable person that was able, based on his abilities and his history and his, his get-down, to tell over, it was over 100, it was over 100 Crips, but to tell them all, look, this is my people, that's it. Wow. Let that rock, let them go, they gone. Man, I look at up here, and, and, and I just go by what I can see from the outside looking in. But you, you're doing interviews now, right? But, yeah. but they got this thing called Clubhouse, and you got like Whack 100, different people that that's what they do. It's a, I've never been on it, not one day in my life, but it's something that people entertain, like where you go in and you talk in different rooms or whatever oh. on the phone. Um, is that something that you would ever do? I don't really like phones, I just told you. Yeah. I'm not big on phones. So that's exactly what it is. They go in different I didn't rooms. know that. Yeah. They, I got actually got a message the other day. You gotta be invited. Yeah. You gotta be It was an invite to to but Club I didn't house. know Clubhouse. You, yeah, I thought going? it was for an interview. No, so. I was half asleep. It was like one o'clock in the yeah, morning. Yeah, that's what time they do it. That's what the, yeah, it'd be yeah. like that. No, and they want I've you never, to get on there and talk. I've never. Uh, you would never do that. Not really. I, never I, say I, never. You never know. Yeah, it's a big. It's an opportunity where people they will start asking you to other interviews, and it does open doors because you might be on there with anybody you don't know. Yeah, I didn't know who who. I mean, I didn't. It what, was, I was sleep. Because once you pick to go in that room, you just don't ever know who's gonna be in there. Yeah. You know, you can't see them. But yeah. you just be in there and they be asking you questions. It'd be about seven people talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not with that one. No. <laughs> but it will put eyes on your brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but I'm a, all right. Like a, I said, I'm not greedy. Yeah, it's a new day and time. And I just ask because there are so many different avenues that you can expand. I've never done certain things, and I don't think I'll play privy to it. I like to just talk and really give you know people something to look at to where somebody might be watching this one night and say, you know what, man, he made it out. Yeah, somebody might be watching this. That's what I'm saying. They say yeah. he made it out. Yeah, definitely. And that's what out. that's why I do it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. for you to still be here, some and, people and, didn't and make that's it. the thing. For me, that's what it's about. You know, I talk about the things I've done to qualify. I talk about the life I live for people to understand. I've been where you at right now. You at the beginning. I'm at the end. I've been through the dark the dark tunnel. I know the twists and the turns, the 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 the, the hurdles and the, and and the, the unseen drops, the falls that you gonna make before you make them, and you don't have to you don't have to experience these things. You don't have to hurt and experience the hurt that I felt, or you don't have to 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 live that type. I mean, if that's what you want to do, if you just a savage, like they say, the demon, or you, if that's what you are, then. Do your demon thing, yeah, no, I, but there's I get it. There, there's a, there's there's consequences for everything. And I know some some people that thought they was demons till they got in that courtroom and they start talking about them football numbers, or they talk, start talk, tossing them L's around with no possibility of parole, and and all the demon left, and now it was back to Jesus and God, there it is, Lord, there. Lord, please, look out now. Lord, Lord, look please. out now, Jesus, please, <laughs> start begging to him. You know, you reach it out to him. That's now. it, man. So. So, okay, I'm going to uh, look at it from a different perspective. When I, when I ask these questions, I've asked them before to certain people that was in this state. When you hear about people in other states, other people who have taken this culture because you guys have blossomed out so much in the mm -hmm. other cities, I, I come up around Shreveport. 
it's it, it, we had people that back in the days was flying in to get away from out here, running from situations to get to Shreveport so they didn't have to deal with L.A. Yeah. That were from L.A. But when they came, they left children. They left people there. They started something. We got Cooper Road down there. You got all these different neighborhoods. You got uh, in Houston, I think there was the, the Pyrus are heavy down there. Um, different different places where you, you guys have captivated these people. Do you guys respect them in these le- on these levels? I respect them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I always I ask that question. I respect them because, you know, we started this years ago, 76, 77, had no clue, had no intention for it to grow, or had no expectations of it growing like it grew. And, you know, it is what it is. It didn't grow. But I respect them because they are part of what we started. All I say is carry it and do it right. Be your own man. Keep your head up. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know some people that use it as a tool. I know some people that mislead it. You know, I know some people that don't have the same respect for it as I do. I do because I know a little bit more. You know, I'm a little older. And I was just telling this guy the other day, it's like, it's like the military. You know, everybody don't get it the first time out. And you might need it where you at. Who to say you don't? Well, I don't know what your conditions are, what your situations are. You know, the way the world is going, you might need an a army within a city to protect your family from the police. I don't know what's going on out there. But I do know that lives aren't free. At least mine ain't. It ain't for free, you can't have it. And if you're coming to get it, I don't care what you wearing, you better have a damn good reason. It don't mean nothing that you got a star on your chest today that you trying to enforce the law. I don't know what law you enforcing. And, and I, this is how I live. So when, when we were talking earlier and I told you I done had physical altercations with the police multiple times by myself. See, I'm standing by myself when I'm incarcerated. I, how did I arrive? when I came here today by, yourself. by myself. That's how I ride. I don't give no police no reason to put their hands on me or to even, I don't know what, what a person's reasoning is, but I know today if the police put your hands on you, he could take your life. He could take so your when life. you reach out to put your hands on me, we in a, we in a battle. And yeah. I've been there multiple times. I got 48 stitches in the back of my head, 16 in the front. I done had this arm broke, this leg broke by the police. I done, I done had multiple, I done been tortured in, inside uh, Mary Loma's uh, uh, ca- uh, county facility in the hole because of physical altercations with the police. And these things I say, they're researchable, you know. And all of those altercations was caused by them starting it? or By them starting it, by their misjudgment, by their misuse of power, by their being immature individuals, you know, and, and just... Uh, you know, looking at me as, and, and, a, and, and a, appraising me just to be an average criminal. No, I'm not an average criminal. I'm not an average bad guy. You know, I, I, I'm a little educated, you know, and, 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 and I'm respectful. I wasn't raised to be disrespectful. But when you press, I press like the police because I know how they press. They pre- if you press, they press 10 times worse, 10 times harder. So I press 10 times harder, you wow. know, because I'm used to... My fights used to be with them over silly stuff, you know, a, a traffic vi- a, a traffic violation, and you want me to get out the car and lay down, put my hands up in the air, spin around and dance, and then lay down on the ground. You don't do white folks like this, so you're not finna do me like this, you know. I'm going off a little off track. That's okay. But no, I'm you're passionate, passionate about, about it. That's these right. Things. When you think about uh, the side of town that you come from, Dr. Dre, it's another one. Dr. That, Dre, I remember when uh, the Eve, no, it wasn't the Eve After Dark, was it the Eve After Dark over on El Cigado and Central? Is, that's where he started, okay. one of his starting spots. Uh, they used to do a hell of a show up there every 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 Saturday, I believe. Uh, <laughs> the booty shaking contest. I'm talking about back in the early 80s, man. You know, they give $100 away. Back in the 80s, somebody giving $100 away 
for a booty shaking contest, you could have a room full of beautiful sisters in there shaking their booty in the ring, yeah. you know, on, on, on the dance floor. And they didn't squared it off and ported it off. And uh, man, he used to, the doctor, he used to wear uh, like a, a white uh, uh, doctor. Doctor's out, yeah. Yeah, man, he was a DJ, yeah. Wow, that's, uh, I think DJ Burnwan got that from Dr. Dre. I just interviewed him in Atlanta. Yeah, so and, uh, it was amazing. Yeah, it's funny how these people, the way they start, it influences yeah. people everywhere. and who would ever knew that starting right there? And I can't say that's where his actual start started from, but for me, that's where I well, you first that's right. encountered the music that he DJs and the, the magic that he does was on El Segundo and Central. Upstairs, they know where it's at. Wow. You know. So, um, YG. YG. You also have, uh, you, have you, you, you and him know each other. Definitely. We did music together. What, uh, what was it like working with YG? Mm, he's, a, he's a hard worker. He's a, he's a workaholic, actually. He's, he's, he was pretty skillful at putting my poetry with his music. Wow. You know, uh, he mastered that. He did that. You did know? he, did you write for him? Or well, no, did you, no. What no, was the poetry that you did? Oh, give me some. Street and I'm hood. I was. Ain't nobody ever gave me shit. So when you see me shining, it's because I'm steady grinding. I stay paper chasing, separating the real from the fake, the fake from the real. I'm living to die and I'm dying to live. Nigga, that's why I got so many women. I'm trying to go deep, hit them ass cheeks, bust them guts, make her come. You know the game. Ain't a motherfucking thing change. Bitch, who do you love? <laughs> <laughs> Man, and you wrote that, and you put that on. That was on this. Uh, that's on, on big. That's on. Who do you love? Oh, who do you love? That's the end of who do you Man, love? I'm going, if you watch the video, the video, you gotta watch yeah, the video. You gotta watch the video about that. When did you know you had a talent in poetry like that? I knew that early on in my community, in my neighborhood. You would do it on the streets. Well, there was a, a gentleman that big old light skinned gentleman. Uh, he used to hang out by Terry Tarzan's house. I didn't want to say that in my last interview. Wow. But uh, Terry Tarzan is a G from my neighborhood, which would be my G. You okay. know, and I grew up with his with his little brothers. And uh, we used to all hang out. He stayed across the street from the high, from the junior high school. His 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 uh his house was there and uh, Terry was a motherfucker. His name is Terry Tarzan. That just about give you the idea. The, the, the streets was like a jungle to him. You wow. know, he swung through the streets uh, and handling his business. He had the best low riders. He was the most creative crime criminal. And, and, and I say that because back in them days, if you wasn't, you know, the money that they was offering wasn't, wasn't worth the time that it took to get it. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. when you see of the privileged people moving so swiftly in life, do you really want to be on a nine to five for five dollars and 25 cents an hour every day, 12 hours a day? No, do the math on that. So, you know, they were creative. They came up with other ways of making money, other ways of enjoying life. You know, the low rider scene, yeah. that's when it was created, you know, and, and he, had a, he had some of the most amazing low riders. Wow. You know, that you ever want to see. You mm -hmm. know, he was one of the most amazing people that you ever want to see. He was resourceful. But he was nobody to be played with. No, he wasn't no one to be played with. Every, but, you know, everybody, you know, Everybody talk about they want to meet Jesus until it's time to meet him. That's real talk. You know, everybody talk about they want to know God till it's time to have a talk with him. Wow. You know, so um, do you think that um, where things are now, uh, black-owned businesses, um, things in the Bompton area, where do you think that, have we moved the needle at all? We've Let's made some real. progress. We made some progress. Uh, but... There's, there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of work to be done. There's still some blockage up. There's still, there's still some, some corrupted, corrupted uh, uh, political criminals that contest, con consistently condition the community to lose wow. by making it look like it's winning. You know, when you take all these aids and and and, and you become, you become. You become dependent upon them. You cripple yourself because naturally people, they, they can strive to do better, to grow if they have the push 
from the desire and the need, but if you've been given something, if I'm always giving you some food stamps, I'm always giving you a few extra dollars, I'm always giving you this, you can depend on me every month. Some people just don't want nothing more. Wow, man, you know. It, but it's, it's conditioning. It's conditioning. And then for the, the, the ones that do, you know, they, they, see, they, see, they see the manipulation. And the ones that do, they like, nah, I want more out of life than that. I want more than $900 a month, you know. I want more than what you're offering at that job. And I know that you got what you got by breaking the law in the 1800s, you know. I know that you got where you at. You, you living off of generation, generational wealth, but your generational wealth was t obtained criminally. Let me ask you this. You, been, you was around when... When, when, when you had the, I interviewed DOC uh, a while back, mm. uh, about two weeks ago now, a week and a half ago. Loved his raspy and, and, voice. And, yeah, but he, <laughs> he basically uh, talks about, he, he started off owning uh, Death Row. Um, mm. And yeah, and, and then blew, it threw me off because I didn't know, but I read all of it. I didn't know that. And he owned 30% of it when it first was launched. He was one of the original owners of Death Row. Yeah. Um, Suge Knight, when you look at how he blazed through, you hear people now speak on his name. But when he was around, I didn't hear people speak on his name. Yeah. That, I that's, just, that's, I, that's, I, 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 listen now, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm just over here trying. So you was around during yeah, these times around. when it was real strong. Yeah. And you to hear the way people, are, because of now the time we in versus back then and the voices that's being displayed. What do you think about that? I mean, it's apparent, it's obvious. They know he's captured, you know. Uh, they probably look at the fact that he gonna be gone for a long time. So let me get my licks in, you know. Some things they probably wouldn't have said when he was out here, but he was created for a reason. See, when he, was, when he became who he became and started doing the things he did, it was generally because people in the industry that had been here for years screwing people, now they're being challenged by a force that's uh, equal or daring, more daring than you expected. You know, so he renegotiated certain people's contracts. I don't really remember. I think Mary J. Bly was one. Wow. I'm not certain. But I remember a few tales about a few people where he renegotiated their contracts. And sometimes you never know what goes on behind closed doors, so you can't never point your finger and say yada, 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 yada. I don't know, but I do know that there's been people in the industry that will rob you, you know, and if you have a resource that can force you to do right, make you by a phone call because you know his reputation. I don't see nothing wrong with that. When we talking about music. Yeah, let me ask this. And uh, business. When, when Biggie was killed in LA, where were you at? I was in prison. What did you think when you heard about it? I mean, you heard, the, in, 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 you heard it in the music, it was West Coast, East Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Um, you can't never say who did what, you know, if you wasn't there. You know, I've did a lot of research on it. I've looked at a lot of YouTube stuff, but they still haven't arrested anyone. Anybody for it, that's right. Yeah, so, you know, when you don't arrest anybody for stuff that everybody knows about, who do you think's behind it? Wow. Do who do you think's behind it? When there's been a crime committed, the government. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the government. The the the. The government of the city. The government of the city. <laughs> what you went to prison? How how long was you in prison? Seven and a half. I. You did seven, seven and a half, half years. Seven and a half. Yeah. What would the, what you seem like a good guy? I am a good guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you seem like a good guy. You know, I sit and drink coffee with you and hang yeah. out with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What what, <laughs> what happened? You were just young? I went to jail for robbery, kidnapping. Oh, he got serious. That's when I was young. 
How old yeah. was you when you first when you first Man, I was in my twenties? Come on up. We got here in my twenties. This is really good. Why yeah. would you want to kidnap somebody? Now? I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't you intend mean to. to. How do you not intend to kidnap it somebody? Happens. What? How? <laughs> it's in the middle of a robbery. <laughs> I tell you to move, I just kidnapped you and I didn't know that. Oh, oh that's crazy. Yeah. Line up over here, damn it. No, you now need somebody police, to make sure that you don't get do it, shot. It's, that's what it's it not is. Kidnap. Yeah, I want to make sure I don't have to hurt you. Mm. Get what I tell you, stand where I tell you, and we, everything going to be all right. And it wasn't, it, you know, it happened inside of business. What It wasn't about the business. It was about the drug dealers. I don't yeah. really mess with businesses. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I was chasing the drug men, you know, the dope boys. And they know. ran you into the business. It, no, they were in that's the business. That's what I'm saying. They, they the basically business was, you. was a, either a front or a, 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 a co-partner, whatever it was, you know. But um, I'll tell you, uh, it was in one of the most prestigious cities in the, in, in, in the county of Los Angeles, which is city of Torrance. Okay. And uh, I remember I left. And, and you were doing this by yourself? No, I had a crime. He never got touched. I left my fingerprints inside the safe as well, So and inside the facility. So... Why That's would you how they do call that? I, I didn't wear gloves. Gloves? I forgot. Like the, like. <laughs> I'm 21 years old. Yeah, but I, would, I, wouldn't, I wasn't expecting to go in there and get it myself, you know. Usually you, 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 uh, you, uh, you, you get these jobs to... The yes. people that's there, open it and they put it in the bag, you know. But this is when I was a young man, you know, and, and uh, uh, you delegate that to somebody normally, you know. So, <laughs> so, so I end up, you know, in there and did what I do and got away. And back then I was so active, I probably did five more crimes but how much, how much did you, How much did you get? Well, it wasn't about, like I said, it was. Wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the money. Yeah, it was about the pounds. About the, back oh, in the day. So you wasn't even worried about no. You nah, just worried about the about the it work. It was about the pounds. It was about of the work, work that yeah. was there. Okay. And uh, well, we are here. We might as well take the money too. You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> so when you get ready, when you get caught, and and you end up catching the seven years, which where do you go to San Quentin? Where, where no, I went to. Uh, I went to Wasco, and it's interesting that you, that was another fight with another deputy. Wow. Uh, I went to the county. I ended up in Torrance Court. They started off at 35 years. Wow. Yeah. I had a robbery prior to that that they, that they, they, uh, they, they call it a joint suspension. That's where it's like you went to prison, but you didn't. It's equivalent to going to prison on paperwork. So if you get into another incident or you 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 you, you commit another crime, we can hold you. We can we can use this 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 against you, which is going to give you more time. Which bumped it all the way up to thirty five years, you know. And so I fought for uh, a year and some change to get it from thirty five all the way down to ten years. And then I fought it for a year and some change. So they gave me a year and some change credit. Wow, know, yeah. Toward, so then you and back then it was half time. So that wasn't so bad because I always made a promise to myself. If they ever give me more than five years, I'm escaping too, Sugar Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to escape too, Sugar Shaft. <laughs> Man, so when you, when you when, with, with, with what you're so doing. Let me share with you. I was so, go ahead. So they have transporting deputies, right? So. And I'm minding my own business. I'm on this, this, they call it the Grey Goose. I'm on my way to Wasco State Penitentiary, I believe it was. Yeah, Wasco State Penitentiary. And uh, I'm handcuffed on a four-man chain to three assholes. You know, I don't know them, never met them. Don't, don't, I haven't even had one word to say to them because they're so childish, you know. Um, there's a, a I mean, she's a sister. I don't give a damn what she's wearing. She's wearing a, a L.A. County Sheriff uniform, and she's driving the bus. And no, she's was she driving the bus? No, she she might have been driving the bus. Very, you know, put together, nice, beautiful, and all the way they just being insulting and disrespectful, and 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 you know, mm -hmm. that's their way of flirting, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, partner, this ain't gonna happen. We on the wrong side of the cage for you to even entertain meeting this woman. But when you talk about my boy Sugar Shaft, that's not always true. You know, I'll tell you about that. That's hard. Sometimes it go the other way, huh? Sometimes it go the other way. Depends on your macking skills. That's so, it. Uh, yeah, so 
You know, they talked about her, her parts and everything, just totally disrespectful. She had this big old corn fed white boy, you know, who's a sheriff, that's her partner, and he's in the seat. The whole time he's looking in this mirror and he can see, pretty sure he can see who's doing all the talking. But because four man chain, two seat, it's a seat here and a seat here, two, a two man seat. So I'm on the chain, but I haven't said a word from the time we left the county jail till we arrived at this state prison. And I learned something that day, and you're gonna learn it too when I tell it to you. Uh, when they uh, pulled in there, uh, he came to the back, he said, okay. He put his hand between on, on these two chairs. On, he said, everybody get up and exit the bus except for these four right here. And he undid the chain uh, so that the rest of the people can go. And then he grabbed, I'm, on the, I'm the last man on the chain. He grabbed each one, pulled him, snatched them to him after the bus was cleared and everybody was off and over to the side. And he said, was that you talking about my, what you got to say about my partner now, man? You know, talking real rough. And I'm a whoop, yo, you know. And, and um, each one of them, oh no, it wasn't me, Lord, no, it wasn't me. Each one of them, all the way through, no, 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 didn't turn into mutts. You know, and I promise you, man, I didn't say one word from the time we got there, from the time we left to the time we got there. So you don't have no reason. If you've been looking in that damn window mirror, you, you should be able to identify who back there talking. So when he gets to me and he posed the same question, he said, I'm a woo woo woo. I said, check this out. I ain't said not one word from the time we left the county jail to right now. And you ain't going to do a motherfucking thing to me. And he snatched me and he grabbed me. And he was strong. So I wrapped my legs around his legs. So his intentions was to throw me down the county, the, uh, the, the bus. And if anybody's ever been on a, a, a prison, a county jail bus, you know the, the, the steps are steep. But with the, with the body weight I had, I wrapped my arms, uh, I, you know, I wrapped, hold, held on to him tight. And he then took one cuff off because you got to get off the cuff to get out of here. So I grabbed on to him, and we both fell down the stairs together because I wrapped my legs around his legs. We fall down the stairs. We hit the ground. As soon as we hit the ground, the prison guards grabbed him, and they grabbed me. They, four or five of them grabbed him and ran him into one corner, grabbed me and ran me into another corner. Now, these is brothers. These are southern brothers. Uh, Big Lee, Big Lee, and he had a wife that worked there at the time. I forgot her name, but they worked. They were, you know, an uh, item. They wow. were married, and they were. But Big Lee was a good six, probably one of the tallest guys you could ever imagine, and big old, big old voice and big old guy. And he snatched him and ran him to the corner. He ran. They ran me to the corner, and they took me in, and they told him we don't do that here. We don't do that here. And he told him when his paperwork is messed up, he got to go back to the county jail. Wow. And I said, well, you can whoop my ass here. You ain't got to take me all the way back to the county jail to beat me up. But you know, at the end of the day, I ended up going back and he ended up uh, confessing that. I don't really believe you was one of the people that was talking, oh, he did. but I'm gonna fuck your time up for the little situation you, uh, you know, that, that was created. Even though it's by you, you caused it. I just participated in protecting myself, you know. And uh, I ended up having, you know, what they did was, if I would have started my time then, I would have hurried, I would have went through process, got a job, and started my day for day. Him sitting, taking me back to the county jail slows me up. Now I have to get put back on the transfer, transfer list to go back to the prison. That takes months and months, and the longer it takes, it, it, it puts off your day for day. Wow. You get day for day when you start working. That's your pay. Mm -hmm. Day for day. Every day you work, you get a day. Wow. Did you, uh, you were you locked up when Tookie Williams uh, was, no, you was out by then, when they, when they uh, uh, put him to death? Yeah, I was out. Yeah. I was out. What did you think about that? Uh, like anything else, I'm sure they've had other people that they could have put given the death penalty to. I don't know, you know, I've heard of some of the things, but I haven't did my own research, so I don't really know what really transpired. But I believe he was, a, he was incarcerated in a time, Long time when the police 
was more racist than, than, than fair. It was more about racism back then, I believe. I believe the police were more racist back then. I, I would agree. You yeah. know, time just kind of... And the system itself was more, more racist, racist back I then. believe. Because it's people that have done a whole lot more than what he done back then, now. And they've gotten life. Wow. I'm you know. A, I'm going to wrap it up. What, um, when you think about the people that move out here, and it seems as if almost it's a, a clause, a blanket over them where the, the celebrities they get with different groups or whatever. Is that a real thing where, you know... The gangs and all of them, they, they kind of look out for these different celebrities. What do you mean? In terms of checking in? Y yeah. We talked about checking in we talk, That's a check-in for them, too. Oh, but, you mean when they come and yeah, they join? When they just, yeah, no, no, when they come and they just basically uh, doing music here. They may not know nobody, but they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know, it, 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 is it better to know somebody when you come in? I mean, it's better to know anybody. Know somebody because that's somebody you when you go into a, 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 a city that's rough. But they don't, this don't apply to our brother, white white constituency. No, it don't. Not and at that's, all. That's crazy. Yeah. You Am know, right? well, you know, it's a reason for everything. <laughs> you know, the white folks got their shit together, right? <laughs> and not to say the blacks, not to say the blacks don't, but our people's a little bit more greedy. They they want to they wanna become. Uh, uh, everything they ain't never been. I'm gonna be your manager. Well, how you gonna manage me? You on GR, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you know Grimace, man. <laughs> Say, man, how can people get a hold of you if they trying to link up with man, you, man? Hit me on Grimace 400, man. That's G R I M M I S 400. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Henry Russell. You know, you can check me out, man. We got some music that just dropped. You and it's who? on Distro Kid, Sugar Shaft, the Gladiator. Man. You understand me? My boy's up in Houston, Texas right now, and it's going wildflowers. You can find it on, on, on Apple. You can get it off your Apple phone. It's called Look at What the World Found 2. Look yeah, and, and, Take and right there now. I gotta check look it at what the world found 2. And you spell Sugar Shaft. Let me say it right. S H U G A, Shaft. Okay. And and you can go to any any digital st uh, store. And man, you can even I'll even send you a sample that we had. We was passing out when we first started this. Man, uh, we was actually supposed to be doing that doing something at the Super Bowl. But he's got a, a very important engagement uh, coming up. I believe Monday or Tuesday, couldn't take the chance. But uh, man, check it out. I'm talking about, if you, if you man, go on and support and go on and buy that, man. It man, ain't $16. Sure. You're going to love the album. I'm not talking about no bullshit. You're going to love the album. I promise you, you're going to throw it in. That's going to be what you're going to be banging. That's what I'm banging right now man. with my dad. Grimmins, man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We no, love man, you, thank y'all. Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk, huh? man. What a boss is talk, man. Boss is wear these hats, too, man. That's why I like oh, it yeah. so much, man. That old hard. Boss man. hat, man. Man. And we <laughs> out, man. <laughs>